Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about Plotly, how you can get started and basically how to plot this 3D scatter plot uh, very, very easily and how you can change, let's say, the color of the axis, the size of the axis, the width of the axis, uh, and maybe some of their nonsense annotations and graph or shapes that you can add onto your plot very easily and how you can combine plot on something like that all within uh, like 20 minutes of this video, hopefully. Okay, so let's get started. So what is Plotly? Plotly is actually just like um, ggplot. It's a kind of visualization tool. However, they're a little bit more advanced in that they're actually more HTML friendly and instead of actually just giving you a 2D object, it can very easily give you something you can embed in a website, let's say. Okay, so how do you install Plotly? Just go to the package package tab over here in your R, press install and install Plotly. That should that should be able to, to help to install Plotly on your computer. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy and the installation size is not very big. So basically this tutorial will be separated into three main sections where the first section will talk about the syntax for Plotly. How do you uh, fit in the data table, define it x-axis, y-axis and z-axis if you're plotting a 3D graph. Uh, how do you add lines or markers onto the plot? How do you change the color of each of the line that you added? And how are the other functions you can do, such as heat map, histogram, and so on? Then the second section focus on the layout, basically the, the canvas or the background of the plot. So how do you change the basic in X and Y axis, the ticks, marks, the color, the width, eh, the thickness, and so on? And how do you change the ranges between X and Y exists? How do you reverse the thing? And how do you do categorical data? Because all the above have not actually mentioned that. Uh, how do you do a box plot? How do you add annotation and shapes? And particularly important, how do you merge multiple axes from multiple plot into one single image? So the last one is actually the final output. Um, that is a consolidation between section one and section two. So how do you add the data into it using uh, online data called Diamond? And how do you actually um, customize this plot based on section two? And in particular, how do you add annotation and shapes overlay onto the plot? So let's get started. So how you use Plotly is actually very similar to how you use ggplot. Is that you have a data frame, and you tell Plotly what is your x-axis, y-axis, okay? But uh, instead of actually like the ggplot where you all, you have to sep separately do something like uh, AES and you know, geom and all that thing, uh, this just automatically assume things for you if you did not tell them, okay? So if you run the first command, uh, Plotly economics act equals to population, so it will actually give you like, this. So if it's a population and you have a single axis, they assume it's a histogram and they'll give you a histogram. So if you give it two axes like that, where you have a date and the population, so it will, it will kind of look at two continuous data and actually plot you something like a scatter plot. Okay, so uh, the data is a bit too dense here, but it's actually a scatter plot. Okay, so the next one is actually slightly more fancy. So in this case, you can actually just give it one single dimension, in this case, the Z dimension, and it will actually give you just a, kind of a heat map situation here you can see, but with X and Y and Z. Okay, but however, if you do want it to look a little bit more fancy with a 3D animation, Plotly also very easily allow this kind of things to be plot. So your X, Y, and Volcano, and you can see the volcano structure very nicely uh, based on your input data. Obviously, your, your input data need to be in three dimension and so on. So it will also automatically apply a color and so on. Okay, so that is actually the, the entry, which but not, not the best way to learn it. So how, how it actually works is that Plotly needs a few things. So first of all, you need the data frame. It doesn't have to be a data frame, but it has to be like a data table and then you specify the x-axis, y-axis, and then you add the, the line traces, heat map, histogram, and so on. So uh, in reality, reality, I mean, not really. So it's actually a plotly, and you wrap a function outside of it. But, but it is really difficult to, to understand when you want to add multiple plot, which is why they actually use a pipe 
uh, operator to actually gradually add things in. So this is similar to ggplot, where you have a plus geom line, plus geom text, and so forth. Okay, so in this case, the data frame, so the data table, will get piped into Plotly, where you define the x, y, and z axis, and then you add the line in between the three dimensions. So in this case, if we run this thing, uh, you will see something like, this okay so you have a pce which is a personal consumption uh, you have unemployment rate and you have the, the you have the date of the data okay so um because the, because it's a line over here it actually added a line in between and it's never really a great way to visualize data and if you do have two or three data uh you usually want to visualize on where when, when you want to analyze initially the data try to plot it on the two-dimensional and use a color to represent the difference instead of just plot it as a three-dimensional object. So, which is why I'm going to demonstrate somewhere something like this. So, this is very similar to what we have just now, but now instead of having another dimension, another uh, thing as a different dimension, we're trying to plot it in the different color. So, in this case, we are trying to plot the x-axis as the date, the y-axis as our employment, and the Y and the second line of Y axis as the P saver T. I have no idea what that means. Okay, so the first one will be colored yellow and the second one will be colored red. So you actually have to put this I bracket thing outside it to actually tell it as an object to understand it as a color. So it's just how properly understand this color object and, and all this thing. Okay, I try to remove it, it doesn't work. So just keep it there. Okay, so this is how you can draw two lines on the same canvas. Okay. So the last one is actually from the package called Palmer Penguins. So it is a uh, data about penguins. And, and here we're trying to plot the, the, the relationship between their bill length, which is called their mouth, and their body mass. So understandably, a bigger penguin will have a longer mouth, which is why if you, blew, you, if you just plot them onto a simple scatter plot like this, you can see kind of a positive relationship between the two. But there stands a lot of outliers out down here that have a very long bill, but kind of a small body size. So uh, something must be missing and something might be different over there. So we need another dimension to go in. So in this case, the next dimension is actually the species. So this actually belongs to three different species of penguins. Let's just uh, run this again because it doesn't have the object P. Okay, so once we get the P, we have to add another lines on top, which is what we do here. So in this case, we can add lines. So when we add lines, actually add it from X to Y uh, directly. So we can actually already kind of see there's three clusters of different penguins, which is Adelaide, Crins, Chin Strap, and Gen 2. I think Gen 2 is also a type of Linux distro. Okay, so we can kind of see the tree cluster over there, but line doesn't actually give it that nice of a situation where we another type of um, visualization tool you can use is at path, where actually add a path between all the data points within the same species. So you can see that kind of a clustering of the three different species, which will be very useful, first of all, if you do want to just cluster your data, Second of all, it's also very useful if you want to predict any data. You get a new penguin, you, you measure their body mass, you measure their build, you can kind of estimate what kind of species that penguin is. Okay, so once we're done with all the background, how to define X, define Y, plot the thing, change the color, and so on, Let, let's go back to our, our canvas, you know, the, the, because plotting and visualization is not just about the plot and the data. It's also about how it looks on the background. Okay, so the first one is, is pretty straightforward, is that we're trying to use the uh, layout function to tell the Plotly how to change. Okay, in this case, you have to define as a list. So in this case, Plotly has a bunch of parameter it has on the default, and these are just some of the things you can change. So this chunk of code focus on the ticks, which is like the small little thing on the axis that you can change. So in this case, we do not want to use an auto tick. We want to do it manually. We want our ticks on the outside of the axis. And the tick zero will be zero, tick length will be 20, tick width will be two, and tick color will be the blue color. And then the next, we actually need to define two things to plot. So sequence means it's a sequence number, sequence generator. One to four by 0 0.25 is that. 
we are gradual, we are generating a sequence from one to four with a step of 0 0.25. So in this case, if you really want to visualize that, you can just put it down and then type x. Okay, one, one, zero, one point two five, one point five, one seven five, and so on until four. Okay, so once we are done with thing x and y is exactly the same thing. I just generate the same thing twice. We plot it. Okay, then in this case, if I have not adding the layout, your figure will look somewhat like that. Okay, kind of boring. Everything is the default and everything is black and blue. But once you can add the layout, remember in this situation, we are trying to change the tick. Okay, the ticks on the, 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 the small little thing that indicates the grids onto your axis. And you can see that once we have added the grid, we can see that our ticks become blue color. They're slightly bigger and you know, they, they look slightly more obvious. Of course, you can change the color to some other like red color if you want to, and the ticks will become red color. And you can also change the, the length, the size, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're done with the ticks. Now let's look at the, the lines. Okay, so just now we have no lines and it looks very terrible. And now we're gonna add it back in. So in this case, we're gonna have a zero line and we're gonna have a show line equal to truth, which is, it will show the line. And then our mirror is equal to ticks, our grid color is the gray, and we have the grid, which is the, 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 the gray line in the background over here. And we also want a zero line color, which indicates where the zero. So that is the line where you usually start to draw when you draw a Cartesian plot. We want it to be red and we want it to be thick, which is four. And we also want a line color. So this is the outline of the whole diagram. We want it to be six. So let's uh, define the object, generate again, a new, a random object called S. And then we can also fit the same object into X and Y exists directly. This will generate a straight diagonal line, just like that. And then we, once we're done, we can fit that into a layout and our figure will look something like that. So look at the gray line that we have in the back, very beautiful. Look at the red line as a zero line over here, very beautiful. And we can also have the black line on the outline, which is not so beautiful. I will make it slightly better, okay? But you can also see that this is the dots that were fitted in. They're not important in this context, but without a data, uh, this thing wouldn't work properly. So we're trying to fit in some dummy data to demonstrate the, the background. Okay, so the next one is actually just the title. So in this case, uh, we are trying to get an uh, empty canvas. So this is important if you just want to demonstrate a ploy or you are drawing something on the plot and you want to remove all the background, okay? So you just put zero line, nothing, show line, force, show tick label, force, show grid, force. Basically, force everything and we have nothing beside one point, two point. You can again change the size of the point to zero and make it disappear but uh, it will just be a blank image. I don't know why we will do that. And you can see that this is here, this is the title, this is the title. It appeared twice because when we define this just now, we actually fit the object called AX into both the X axis and the Y axis. So the X axis and Y axis will be, slightly, will be the same properties. But if you do want them to show as, a dif as some, something different, you can put AX and BX and define them individually so that they will actually show as a different object. Okay, so the next one is trying to reverse the range. So one of the things that I don't like in ggplot is that when I need to reverse, let's say, a range of a factor, I actually have to redefine my factor before I plot it into my ggplot. So I, I'm sure that there's a better way to do it in, in ggplot, but this is one of the ways you can do, which is just use a list auto range equals to reverse, where you will just reverse the range directly and it will go from one to two to two to one immediately without actually doing much of it. Okay, so the next one is actually the, the range. So that will be your X limit or Y limit for people that have familiar with ggplot. Okay, so that define the range of the axis. So in this case, our X axis is actually zero to 50. As you can see, zero to 50. But obviously it's too big, so we do not want that. We want to shrink it down to 10. So in this case, I write another one, which is actually just add layout and uh, figures, sorry, the layout X axis equals to 10 and the figure will be nicely plotted out like that. So you can again change it by shrinking or making this much bigger or much smaller and you can fit it to your Y axis or X axis uh, um, together as the same object or individually as different lists, basically. 
Okay, so the next one is actually just how do you uh, mix categorical and continuous data. So in this case, if they, if they detect something like a string within your list, they'll automatically assume X as a categorical data and plot you a bar plot, bar plot directly. Okay, so actually we, we do define bar over here, but it should be clever enough to, to know and, and let's see if I get an error if, if I do that. Yep, it doesn't. So it will usually automatically define things for you if you don't put it in. But of course, it's a better practice to put it in because uh, it makes it easier for you to read and easier for other people to understand what you're trying to do, especially when they're troubleshooting your code. Okay, so here we're just combine, combining what we learned just now, which is x-axis, can you can change the type to category just to make sure that they show as a category. And we have a title called product code, which is product code over here. And we have y-axis, list of number in stock, that you can see over here. And our range is zero to seven. So this is how you actually um, use them to, to relabel your graph and make it prettier and so on. Okay, so the next one is a little bit more complicated. So this is actually a, a block box plot. Okay, so I'm not sure why it doesn't show up. Let's just try this again. So this is four different box plots. So in this case, X is a list, two, three, one, five, and Y of the first box plot is just A. So it will plot on the same line. So in this case, it will actually calculate its um, median, maximum, minimum, quarter one and quarter three. So in this case, you can see A, the minimum is one, maximum is five, Okay, then the median is 2.5, the quarter one is 1.5, quarter three is 4, and so on and so forth for the other object. So I'm not sure why C is not added. Let's just do that again. Yep, A, B, C, D, they're all here. Okay, so this is how you can do a box plot relatively easily. Relatively easy without actually much of the, what is that called? Um, a, the configuration that you need to fit it in. This is just based on the default plot. Okay, but however, most of the time, this is not what you want. You want to draw, uh, let's say I want to group, I want to reverse the A, B, C, D. I want to add some title. I want to segregate A, B into one cluster, B, C into one cluster. And this is how I'm going to do that. Okay, the first one I'm going to add is, of course, the Y axis. I want to make it uh, categorical descending. It means that I want to reorder the, the Y axis. And then I'll... I'll tell you why is it descending later. The margin set, the empty space outside of your plot, and the legend is 0 0.9 and 0 0.98. Okay, so why is it category descending? It becomes A, B, C, D, because when we count Y exists, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this case, you reverse actually means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is why A, B, C, D is actually descending. Okay, so the next one is legend. So legend is actually 0 0.98 and 0 0.9. What that means is that in your plot, you can imagine that the bottom right corner is 0 0.0, the top, sorry, bottom left corner is 0 0.0, the top right corner is one and one. So 0 0.98 and 0 0.98 means that it's on the top right corner one, uh, is very near to one and one. So what happened if I change it to, let's say, X axis, which is on a horizontal, 0 0.5, means that it will be in the middle of the plot. And Y axis, I've changed to 0 0.5, it will also be in the middle of the plot. So if I rerun this code again, the legend should be right in the middle of my plot, blocking the way. Okay, can you see that? Of course, this can also be in negative. Let me see how, let, let, let's see how it works later. Okay, so we're done with our legend and some basic configuration and margin and legend and all that. Let, let's just add a shape. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to add a shape on the top and I'm trying to add a shape on the bottom. So how would I do that is that I'll have to add in a new argument called shape. Again, it will be a list and I'm going to add in two line. And these two line has to be their separate, separate list by itself. Okay, so what I recommend is that just copy the code and then change whatever parameter you want because the list structure is getting really, really confusing. Okay, so the first line is something like that. So the first line, you can define the color and the width. That's pretty straightforward. The color is the color and the width is the width. It's a type of line. Starts from x is equal to 0 0.3 and x1 is equal to 1.2. So that is the starting point of the x-axis is 0 0.3 and the end point is 1.2 means that they're drawing all the way from the very left of the 
the, the plot to the very right of the plot and then we're using add reference called paper so in this case our 0 and 1 definition is actually called the paper referencing so I'm not sure it's a technical term but <laughs> but but the, the the way of understanding it is called paper and if you have a different type of referencing uh, this might not be one this might be 25 or something like that depends on what you're choosing so same with y exists which is y is start at zero and end at zero which is why it will only be like that so if y1 is equals to one then it will be a slanted line okay you can imagine x0 and y0 being a point x1 and y1 equals to another point and they'll draw a line in between the two of them okay so this one means that you know it's on the bottom of the plot all the way to the left to right so, and the second line over here is one one which means it will be the top of the plot and all the way to the left to right so once we have plot that so we'll look at one above there's no line there's no horizontal line over here we have only one vertical line but if you go down we can actually see two more horizontal line added by our shapes just now so this will be equivalent to the app line situation from ggplot okay so the next one will be what are we looking at the next okay we're looking at annotation so annotation means kind of like geom text we want to add text onto your graph okay so what we're going to add is we're adding the word subgroup we're adding the word groups and we're adding the word one and adding the word two so their, their relative position will be x and y so unlike line just now where it is a line so you need two points to define this will only have a single coordinate which is the exact location of where they should be so in this case x equals to about zero and y equals to one means it's all the way on the left all the way on the top that will be our subgroup so if we run this you can see subgroup is all the way here and groups will be where are you so yeah very similar in terms of y coordinates but it will be actually more negative so x equals to zero this x equals to 0 0.2 which is why it's again more on the right so similarly to one and two and the the line and the structure and so on so you just key in the relative coordinates of where do you want them to appear so it can also be negative which means that it's out of the original plot region that you have so if you realize that it's missing you might want to adjust your margin because it might be outside the margins okay so so the last one is how do we combine the plot together so of course before you combine you have to define your canvas so this just define the canvas and it's empty okay so the first one is to add the first trace so our x and y data is over there and we can add the first trace and it's going to tell you some error that it's not suitable and so on so just ignore them but this will be the shape that it is so the shape itself doesn't matter we're just trying to develop we're just trying to tell how you can add those uh, graph together okay so let's do our second graph so our second graph will have their own x and y but the 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 the, the special things over here is that y axis equals to y2 so if you don't define it it's the first x axis but if you separately define means you need its own y axis okay so it's also drawing a line and let's try to draw this figure so we are we are not plotting something new it is adding to the same figure just just remember that okay so our trace zero is actually somewhere out of this picture they are not here anymore okay because just now you can see this is zero one two three zero one two three this is zero one two three and one two four five so they are not show up together but they will later so don't worry because this is on y2 the second y-axis okay so similarly we can also do the same with x-axis a new one y exists a new one and also the same line you can draw that and it will be the same plot and then the next one will be this and and the special things you can see is actually because the number is so big within each of them it actually automatically go into a, uh, a log plot for you okay so this is the fourth one same this is x2 y4 and now is how we actually just club all them together so what we do is to change the layout so now what we do is that we just do the y-axis is different, y2 is different, x2 is different, x3 is different, and y-axis 4 is different. Okay, so uh, all, all, the, all these parameters just tells you that uh, where it should go on the plot. Okay, so yeah, the title just 
just define the name of the plot and so on and where the anchor is the one that you want to look at and where it actually arrive on the plot okay so what does all this thing comes together is that it will actually show you one two three four like that where both of the x-axis are joined because just now we only have two x-axis x-axis 2 x-axis 1 but we have four y-axis y-axis x-axis 2 y-axis 3 and y-axis 4 1 2 3 4 all separate but these two will share the same x-axis and these two will share the same y-axis and so on Okay, so the last one is just to combine what we all learned together because it's already been 25 minutes, <laughs> okay? So, so what we do is that we are creating a, a, a sample data from a data set called diamond, which is actually the properties of multiple diamonds. And we want to have a 3D graph to visualize their clarity, cards, and prices, okay? So basically what it does is that we have F1 and F2. So this simply define the color of the axis as you can see here, tick font and tick font, sorry, title font and title tick font actually get fit in F1 and F2. So that's the property of the tick and the title. And then we are not going to show any grid because in 3D plot, you usually don't want to show grid. That, that's slightly confusing. Okay. So we also have the scene, which is the camera. So in this case, what does the camera means is that it's where your eye is supposed to be on default on the plot. So X exists. Um, is similar to the reference paper that we used just now, where it's on here, y is here, and z axis is here. Remember x, y, sorry, x, y, and z. So it will be somewhere here looking down at your data. Feel free to change around and see what happens. So once we define all the background parameters that we can, we want to actually plot it out. So just a recap, we need a data, data table, pipe it into Plotly, where you actually define the X and Y and Z axis. So all this are actually just default. Uh, you can change it if you want, but, but the type tells it what kind of plot that you want to do. Usually it come out as a scatter and, and more is just markers, which is the dot and the marker size is equals to three. And we actually fit it into a layout which is actually called title is 3D scatter plot, which is what you see over there. And the scene equals to whatever that we did just now. So it is important just now at the axis is fit into X, Y, and Z so that all three axes looks exactly the same. And this is what we get, okay? So we have, whoa, 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 okay? So we have the, the red color font over here very nicely. We have X, Y, Z, where Y is the, what, what is Y over there? Y is the clarity and this is the, Cut. So X is the cut, Y is the clarity, and Z is the price. Yes, correct. So you get a scattered 3D object over here. And yeah, there's not really any good relationship in between, isn't it? I'm not a diamond expert. Okay, but uh, what if this is not enough? What if we still want to add, let's say, a shape and some annotation onto the plot, even though it's 3D, we, we still want to add something to block our view. Okay, so this is what you can do. So using the, the, the knowledge that we learned just now in the layout, what we can do is we can add an annotation here. So you can see that the Y reference, X reference is using a paper reference, but the annotation will be X 0 0.5, which is mean it will be in the center, and Y equals to 0, 0, which is why it will be on the bottom of the plot. I've also changed the margin by massively increasing the bottom plot because I want to accompany my annotation and my shape. Okay, so again, the shape will be a straight line, same way what I did just now, the same color, the same weave, maybe let's just make it a bit thicker so it's fun. And we're gonna have a line from X zero to one, which is left to right. We also, from minus zero to zero, which is only on zero, so it's not slanted, it's a straight, flat bottom line. Okay, so once we run all this, we'll combine all our knowledge of Plotly together and we should be able to get what you see in the beginning of the video, which is this one. You have a 3D scatter plot as a title. You have say this is added with annotation, but shouldn't because they're not necessary. Remember when we add annotation as shape, they're still a two-dimensional object. They're not added into our 3D plot. So, they're on, so when you navigate with the background, they don't move together. Okay, so we can also zoom in and out quite easily go left and right quite easily. You can again change the color or with the fourth dimension and the size of the markers if you want to. So that's basically everything I need to talk about for Plotly. 
Again, I don't think this will be the end of this package. There's a lot more that you can do for Plotly, but I do not want to go down this rabbit hole unless uh, someone have an actual idea of what I what do what do you want to do basically? Just put a comment down below and let me know what you want me to do so that when I put out video, people actually watch it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. It's been amazing. I can talk continuously for half an hour without dying. So that's all. Good night. Goodbye. See you next time.